This podcast is brought to you by OEC and Collision Link Plus, a new product upgrade for collision repair shops designed to improve parts ordering, save more time, and capture more profits. Learn more at oeconnection.com slash collision link hyphen plus. Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another edition of Body Shop Business, the podcast. First off, I'd like to thank our friend and sponsor, OEC and Collision Link Plus. Today, I have a very special guest who I've known for quite some time. I consider him a friend and a colleague. And I think he's one of the hardest working men, people, period, in the collision repair industry, Brandon Eckenrode, who is the managing director of the Collision Repair Education Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that raises funds for collision students and schools from across the country. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Jason. Pleasure to be here and happy Friday. Thanks for being here. You know, today's topic is going to be one that is a real sore point today with collision repair professionals, the tech shortage. And I got to tell you, I read a recent industry report that said that the tech shortage is the strongest headwind right now facing the collision repair industry. We've got a lot of challenges and probably too many to list today but the tech shortage is the strongest headwind. And I gotta tell you, looking back at the body shop business issues in the 80s and 90s, finding qualified help was still a problem even back then. And it's always been an issue, but today it's at a crisis point. So I wanted to start off by asking you, why is there a tech shortage, Brandon, in your, in your mind? I think there's a handful of reasons why, Jason. One, I think there is a lack of awareness out there when it comes to knowing and understanding that this is a viable career path for students. So some students might be familiar with the mechanical route, um, but they're not familiar with the collision industry route. So I think there's an opportunity there um, to better showcase this industry and what the different career paths are. Um, I think there's a sometimes negative perception about the industry in the general public when it comes to thinking it's the the dark, dingy body shop industry um, of old. Um, however, as you and I both know, you know, these cars are becoming more and more complex and we need a highly skilled, trained individual to be repairing them. Um, so it only amplifies the need that we have if we want to be driving around in properly trained, I'm sorry, properly repaired vehicles. Um, so that's, you know, some of the many different reasons. And also when it comes to these schools, you know, they're, they're facing, um, crippling budgets for their program. And that's where we come in to try to help support. But if these programs um, are gonna be providing the best quality technical education, this industry has an opportunity to kind of rally around the local schools, high school and college collision school programs nationwide um, to help address this issue, as opposed to just, you know, a, mentioning that it's a problem, we can actually do some, have some efforts to actually fix it. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's this thought out there that, young people are not interested in the automotive industry. And I know that some will argue, and I think I heard this from you some time ago, is that they're not, it's not that they're not interested. They haven't been educated on the opportunities in the industry. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Um, they, they're, they're probably not aware of it and or fully understanding what all the different career paths are to what I mentioned earlier. You know, I've been in the industry for 20 years um, but you do not want me repairing a vehicle. And I say that only to kind of mention that there's many different career paths um, that are available. There's many different types of businesses and industry segments that are looking for people. It's not just you know, on the repair technician. Well, that is the, probably the largest segment that we need to help address in the very immediate future. But there's opportunities when it comes to PR, marketing, um, you know, customer service, you know, estimators. There's a lot of different career paths. And I think showcasing those many opportunities hopefully will then change the understanding that these students have of where they could possibly fit in as a future industry professional you know the the entire automotive industry needs young fresh talent right uh truck mechanics and auto mechanics and the list goes on and on how do we make sure that the collision repair industry gets their fair share of the young talent coming in 
So to your point, Jason, um, how I've typically phrased it or I've commonly phrased it in some of my presentations is that we are in a trade war, more or less, because there's other technical trades that are in the same position we are when it comes to need for people. They have an aging workforce. So this is a opportunity for us to put the collision industry front and center to them because the other industries are possibly going after them as well. So we need to not only help educate the students, uh, we also need to, as what we say, influence the influencers. So is that parents, is that school counselors, is that administration? Those are the people that we need to help make sure that they fully understand what the real opportunities are, as that will probably be passed down to the students. But also in front of the students, we have an opportunity that I know we're gonna talk about in a little bit here, that we need to make sure that these schools are well supported by the local industry members. A common phrase that is you know, mentioned is that this is a national problem with a local solution. So if the industry is telling us, yes, this is a problem, it's time to start, it's time to stop talking about this problem and start taking action. Otherwise this bad problem is only gonna get worse. Right, and let's talk about the last two years. It's been, it's been an interesting time, right? Uh, yes. And I wanna talk about the effect that COVID had first on collision schools and students, and secondly, the Collision Repair Education Foundation. But let's talk about the students first. COVID comes in, uh, a lot of schools uh, go remote. Um, a, a lot of uh, students and people, and regular employees in the workforce will probably start thinking about uh, maybe a different career path. Either they were you know, laid off or furloughed and they decided to start a new career. Uh, maybe students learning was put on hold. Did COVID have a negative impact on any momentum that had built to, to perhaps getting more collision students, uh, uh, students rather learning about collision repair and getting in the workforce? It absolutely affected it and um negatively affected it at that, as you can imagine, trying to teach a technical trade, a hands-on technical trade over Zoom is not the ideal situation. So these instructors were basically forced to do what they could when it comes to providing uh, some sort of technical education over the computer to these students, trying to keep them engaged, which I, um, you know, I give them credit for all that they attempted and tried. And we tried to help complement that technical learning with different things that we were able to help organize, which we can talk about here, but also, you know, because of these uh, schools around the country, they were forced to take a closer look at their budgets because they're being scrutinized just like everything else was. And when you try to compare uh, a math class cost versus a body shop class cost or collision repair class cost, obviously those are pretty varied numbers because of the tools, the equipment, the supplies that these programs need. So if these collision school programs are hurting on attendance, it's an easy thing for the administration to maybe not even fully understand what the career opportunities are and just look at the numbers and they'll say, well, if I have to cut money, where's that money going to be cut from? And if they, have to, they don't have that understanding about the industry and the fact that there's a line of businesses out the door that are waiting for those students, they're just like, all right, well, we can just cut here. So that dwindling number of collision programs around the, the country um, probably will get even smaller in the near term because of things like that. Uh, we have heard of instances um, that some schools have opened up new programs. So we're always obviously excited about that because when there's new programs opening up or there's investments being made, that's a good thing. Uh, but hopefully as it's a, you know, it's in the industry and into the, you know, uh, public news about, you know, there's a lot of students that are graduating from college, traditional four-year college. They don't have career paths or job opportunities. They have a mountain of debt that they have to pay. So there is an opportunity for us to then, if there's a focus on technical education as being an option, now is the time for us to make sure that, again, like I mentioned, the collision industry is put in the best spotlight possible so that we're attracting the best and then employing the best. Yeah, let's talk about your organization, the Collision Repair Education Foundation. I mean, you guys are it. You are the main fundraising effort in the industry for collision students in schools. Did COVID throw you guys for a loop? Did your funding decrease? Was it harder to get funds? Um, how did COVID affect your your guys' efforts? It absolutely affected us. Um, at, like you mentioned, we are a national 501c3 charity. We have been uh, supported by the industry uh, in all the different industry segments over the past, you know, we're 31 years old this year. Um, but we had to respect the fact that during COVID, 
companies were having to, you know, possibly lay off people. They're reducing budgets and things like that. So we had to be respectful of the fact of knowing what people were going through and our approach in terms of, you know, what that annual support was. But it was also in my ever optimistic mind, it was, okay, if this is the case, we can't just complain about it. These schools still need support. So it actually caused us to be a little bit more creative when it comes to fundraising. Um, and one of the well-known projects uh, that was actually facilitated by one of our industry partners, um, Sturgill Konai, um, they are the commercial lift company. Through one of their connections or through their staff, we were able, actually able to get in front of Jay Leno and they were willing to ask Jay, hey, this is a charity that you know supports schools so that we obviously know that Jay's interested in cars, but also the fact of the technical education. So Jay Leno was able to very graciously donate a private tour of his garage as a fundraiser for us. So yes, there was, um, we saw a reduction in spe- our you know, donations, but it, off- it made us kind of pivot a little bit or just kind of think outside the box. And how do we get more funds to be coming in from outside sources that we had not thought about in the past? but we still need to help these schools because they still need support. Um, so we've st- slowly started to see kind of a return to normal. Uh, we've gotten new companies involved with us that are providing, whether it's monetary donations or in-kind donations. So we're excited about this year and moving forward with some of our initiatives. You mentioned your optimistic attitude and, and I, I, I can't blame you because I remember you, you told me this story one time about where CREF started, the Collision Repair Education Foundation started when it was first created fundraising wise to what you're raising now. Tell me about those numbers because it was startling to me. And this is a direct testament to the industry in terms of the amount of support that they have given to CREF, which again, turned it helps the school. So in 2009, which was our first year as being kind of a fully philanthropic organization, we raised roughly about $300,000 in support for the schools, which is great to start off. Since then, we've raised over $500 million worth of support for the schools, which is, you know, it's not the foundation, it's this incredible industry. And to your point, in a lot of cases, we have become, meaning the the collision repair school programs have become the envy of other technical programs because these other instructors, like the welding instructor, the auto service instructor, they're seeing this constant level of support being provided to the collision programs and they're asking, where is all the support coming from? How are you getting all this stuff? And they're like, there's this foundation and we're only a full-time staff of four, which I give complete credit to our incredible team of Amber, Tiffany, and Melissa in terms of facilitating the industry and then helping to direct support where it's needed around the country. So Brandon, tell me how, if a collision repair facility today wanted to connect with their local schools to get a pipeline of students, how do they go about doing that? If they're not already familiar with what schools are in their local market, they can reach out to us and we can help identify, okay, here's where you're located and within a, say, one hour, two hour, three hour radius, because again, the number of schools is, you know, it's kind of dwindling. So we want to make sure that the schools are supported so that they actually stick around. We can help identify what schools are in their backyard. We can help make introductions to that instructor. If they're already working with a local school, there's still opportunities to work with us because what we want to make sure is that those local schools are fully active with us. We are able to distribute roughly about $15 million a year in various types of support. So we want to make sure that that school say, you know, Jason, in your backyard, they are fully engaged with us to make sure that they have every opportunity to give into them when it comes to whether it's monetary donations or in-kind donations. So first step, reach out to us. Let's start that conversation and get those local schools in their markets active. What is your reaction to the shop owner that says, well, you know, I don't want some wet behind the years kid who has no experience. I'd rather get somebody with 20 years of real experience. Uh, that always discourages, discourages me when I hear that. Uh, what is your reaction to that statement? So I've heard on numerous occasions where to your, you know, to your points that, you know, they've either that situation that you mentioned, or let's say they had a bad hiring experience with a local school years ago. And I say, understand, respect. That was what happened in the past. So the ownership is on you of how are you going to help make sure that the quality that's coming out of your local school is at the level that you want. That actually means I'm taking the time to get active with the school, serve on their advisory board, make sure that those schools and students know what the expectations are from the local businesses to make sure that he is ha- he or she is happy when they actually graduate and they become a productive entry-level staff member. So 
the typical age, you know, in the industry, uh, depending on the market, probably ranges anywhere between we've heard kind of as low as the mid 40s. There's some markets that tell us that that average age is close to 60 years old. So this is a critical bad situation now. And this industry can either start addressing it together or it's only going to get worse because we're not getting the students in and they're going into other technical trades. So I completely understand and respect maybe the past situation that they've had. But what are we going to do together to change that moving forward? Brandon, you mentioned earlier vehicle technology, and as you and I both know, and the industry knows, these cars are getting really sophisticated. They're becoming rolling computers. Is this not a new opportunity to go after some new type of person to come into the industry who has some technical savvy, maybe a younger person who grew up with a smartphone and a tablet and a joystick in their hand? Um, is this not, not an opportunity to reach uh, a, a younger a generation or even just a, a, a new type of employee that has a different skill set than they had in the past? Absolutely. Um, in terms of, you know, reaching out to non-traditional students, but, you know, not just the collision students. I've heard of some companies that start to get engaged with like the robotic students that are in their local you know, schools. Um, some of these local markets might not have a collision program. So these businesses are forced to have to think outside the box in terms of how to recruit. Um, but to your point, this is absolutely an opportunity for us to showcase how advanced and technical this industry is because of the cars that we're all driving. It's not the cars um, of the past. And I've, I've commonly made the, the reference, you know, doctors are seen in this, you know, this light of, you know, this incredible profession. I would say doctors have it easy because our bodies have changed. I'm a 1978 model, you know, person. Vehicles are changing yearly. So that how to, this industry needs to keep up with how to repair these vehicles is an opportunity for us to showcase it as a complex technical industry. And we have some initiatives coming up that are going to put this industry in the front facing, uh, will be front facing to not only the school counselors, but the general public that this industry has not seen before, which I'm excited for. And I think the industry should be not only excited for, but can help make sure that we're doing that in the largest presence possible by supporting initiatives that we've got coming up around those um, kind of public outreach opportunities. Yeah, Brandon, let's talk about some of those initiatives. I know one of the things you're really proud of um, are the career fairs you hold on a, a national basis. Let's talk about some of the other things that the Collision Repair Education Foundation is doing specifically to, to spearhead uh, the recruitment and of, of technical students. Absolutely. So at, at SEMA 2021, um, we announced in collaboration with BASF and KTL Restorations, what was called Operative Talent. And what that project is going to involve is KTL, which is a, uh, a car rebuild company out on the East Coast. They are going to, in addition to our industry partners that we're gathering around this project, we're going to be rebuilding a 69 Camaro. And that project will basically run from the announcements was at SEMA 2021. The car is going to be rebuilt. Uh, there will be raffle ticket opportunities, and then the car will be auctioned or raffled off at SEMA 2023. So not this year, but actually the following year, only because of the part shortage and everything that we didn't want to rush it too much. But the money that is raised from that project, both from corporate sponsorships and then raffle tickets being sold, we anticipate it raising roughly about three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. That will specifically fund a national PSA campaign about this industry out to the general public. So you're not too far off where you're going to see commercials on TV, on radio. There will probably be bilingual types of you know uh, PSAs created as well. But it will be promoting the industry to showcase how complex this industry is, how complex the vehicles are, and how that we need more and more people to enter this industry. And because of it being a PSA, because we're that neutral body, we can kind of push that message out. It will be directing people to a website that will be generic in terms of they won't be corporately branded. It'll be, you want to learn more about the industry? Here's how you find a school near you. Here are the different career paths in this industry that you may not be aware of. Here are some kind of cool videos that showcase how complex these vehicles are becoming. But that will be a public facing um, a PSA campaign that we're going to be doing here in this near future. Uh, the other project that we've got coming up this summer, which again, this industry always complains about the fact that the guidance counselors, I should, they actually prefer to be called school counselors, so I apologize. Um, they get together through the American School Counselor Association, which is their national uh, association. In Austin, Texas, this July is their annual conference, which will gather anywhere between four to 5,000 kindergarten through high school school counselors from around the country. 
through a very generous grant from General Motors, the foundation, which basically means the industry, will be there as one of the lead sponsors of the event. So we will have a booth there, we will have uh, materials there, but trying to educate those school counselors on what that real information is, because what we're hearing from that association is that they, they get it, they need to start embracing technical education more. They just are asking for what resources are available to help teach the students because, and I remember back in my day, Jason, you know, you have a very limited time with the school counselors. So expecting him or her to remember everything about the industry is probably not realistic, but it's all right, now give me the tools. Do I direct them to this website? Do I direct them to this app? Do I direct them to these posters that I have hanging up by my, in, you know, that school counselor office to showcase the many different opportunities, what the wages are and the opportunities that they have. So I'm very excited about this and I hope the industry is not only, like I said, excited, but can help make these a, a, a you know, a big success. Brandon, so give me in the industry some light at the end of the tunnel. We know how many, uh, we know that we know the demand in the automotive industry for technicians, and we know how many are graduating yearly from Votex schools. Give us some light at the end of the tunnel that, that this situation is going to get to improve. I believe that through the industry actually getting involved with us and in turn with their local schools, we can change the national conversation. This industry, through us all collaborating together, I have a firm, um, uh, I don't know if you want to say expectation, but we could have a direct impact on future job reports because of the amount of people that are needed out there within the, you know, within the industry. We can have, um, you know, kind of change the terms of the, you know, the general public and the news talking about this industry that we weren't even aware of. Here's what's going on with this industry. Here are what the opportunities are. This is not just a Chicago or Cleveland opportunity. These students could be anywhere and they're needed everywhere around the country nationwide. So if, as the dialogue is around the traditional four-year college route is probably not the best because of the lack of employment opportunities and the student debt burden, now is the time to make sure that we can showcase the industry so that we're attracting the best uh, and then employing the best when it comes to these, um, these students and fully understanding what the opportunities are. Right. And you bring up a good point. Um, and that's a great selling point, right, for our industry is that why to go to a four year undergraduate school uh, and go in that kind of a debt uh, when you can go to trade school for a couple of years and start making money sooner than your peers. Right. Exactly. And I've seen at our career fair events, uh, whether it's an instructor or maybe a parent, um, you know, physically pushing the students into the career fair area, telling, you know, them get out of my basement get a job. These people are here to hire you. Go talk to them because there's opportunities there. Now we just need to make sure we educate the students on what those opportunities are. And I can't stress enough, these businesses need to work with us to invest in their local schools. Make sure that they are the best they can be. If they want a properly trained entry-level staff member to come into their business, getting involved with the local school is going to be key to make that happen. I think at one point too, you mentioned that getting to, to kids early is important. Like even kindergarten or first grade, getting them, getting, putting cars in their hands or, you know, how, 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 how can we accomplish that? I think that will be, um, that is absolutely needed. Um, Jason, we're hearing some schools are telling students to pick their career path at the junior high level. Um, and I don't know about you, but you know, what career path I wanted in junior high is a lot different than where I ended up now. But um, I think in getting in front of the parents, but then also, like I said, getting in front of the school counselors, there's, there's things that we can create, tools, resources, educational opportunities that are age you know, specific. So how we're gonna educate a kindergarten about this industry, it's gonna be different how we educate a high school student about this industry. But those, those resources need to be created we can help create them working with our incredible industry partners. Um, but the, that is what's needed to make sure that we're in front of them from the get-go. Brandon, so here we're sitting here at spring. Uh, the school year is almost over. Summer's coming. What are some opportunities this summertime for collision shops to connect with schools? That's a great question, Jason. And there are a number of different opportunities that are available for um, whether it's a body shop, repair facility, and or other members of the industry where schools have identified for us some projects that's kind of like on their wish list that we could help them out with that they don't have the budget for. So it's projects like with the students being gone, it's an ideal time to go in there and kind of give that classroom slash lab kind of a professional makeover so that they look the best so that, again, we're attracting a higher quality student. So 
you know, businesses can help sponsor brand new epoxy floors for their local program, a fresh coat of paint on the walls. Um, businesses should absolutely start saving your scrap fenders, bumpers, um, hoods. Those, these schools need those parts to be able to practice on as opposed to severely dated parts or vehicles that they might be utilizing because that's all that they have. Um, and we've heard of instances where these instructors are actually rummaging through dumpsters of body shops and dealerships to get those parts. Let's keep those instructors out of the dumpsters where a body shop can just save their customers slightly damaged parts. That's a great donation to a local school and it helps them introduce themselves to the students. So at the beginning of the fall semester, it's almost like a great back to school gift where Jason, the body shop manager, could be in the local school saying, here's some parts that you need. Hey, this is my business. Here's some business cards. So you're starting to actively, you know, get engaged with the students so that when that student graduates, like, hey, I remember uh, Jason from Jason's Body Shop. I've got his business card. Maybe I'll reach out to him and, you know, ask for a job. So there's a number of different projects that we can help get these local businesses aware of and what their local schools are asking for immediately this summer. So, Brandon, if there is a company out there or collision repair facility, manufacturer, distributor, whoever it might be, who wants to help you out, help the Collision Repair Education Foundation out, and in so doing, help out collision students and schools, where can they go? Is there a website or is there a phone number they can call to donate product or to donate money or? Absolutely. Um, they can reach out to, or one, visit our website, collisioneducationfoundation.org. Um, but they can also email info at ed-foundation.org. Um, let us know where they're at. We can help, again, like I said, identify what schools are in their backyard and start that dialogue of what we can do together to, again, help these schools to ensure that these properly trained students are entering the industry. Right, because I think you and I both know it's this is a problem that is not going away anytime soon. Um, but as an industry, we have to dig ourselves out of it, right? We're not going to get much help from the outside. And so we need to do everything we possibly can to um, help ourselves. And I think the Collision Repair Education Foundation is uh, probably a, a, a key part of that. We, are, we have been successful because of our industry partners, but to your point, you know, complaining about this issue is not gonna solve it. So let's actually start taking some action, get involved. Um, the foundation can help facilitate that, um, that support and looking forward to hearing from you know, shops around the country to start that process. Well, Brandon, I really appreciate you coming on as a guest to Body Shop Business, the podcast. I appreciate all the hard work you do, and I know the industry appreciates all the hard work you and your staff and the Collision Repair Education Foundation does. Frankly, I don't know where we would be today without you guys. I've been to your events, the golf fundraisers, the, the school makeovers, and they are fun and phenomenal. So I really appreciate it. Jason, we couldn't do what we do without our industry supporters and you having me on and featuring us like Body Shop Business Magazine has always been a strong supporter. So helping to spread the word is a way to help support us because it just helps maybe inform someone who is not aware of us, what we do and how we can collaborate. So thank you for the continued support. And we're looking forward to uh, changing this industry in the very near in the future. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Body Shop Business, the podcast. Check out BodyShopBusiness.com for more podcasts.